It's a very dark day in the world of Magic the Gathering. Wizards of the Coast has just made a ton of announcements that has ignited serious rage in the Magic community. We're talking about price increases, making Universe Beyond standard legal, increasing the already staggering pace of Magic set releases, and if that wasn't enough, they're also changing the rules of the game. Magic. History. I'm an old wizard. The magic historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for an absolutely cram packed and insane installment of mega magic news this is an ultra rage edition because wizards of the coast has stacked a whole bunch of horribleness into one disgusting sandwich and they want to shove it all the way down your throat but before we dive into that sandwich of grossness i want to give you guys a little treat you may have noticed in previous videos i mentioned that i have a brand new movie review channel called hatcher movie talks but now i have an extra layer of goodness we have created a hilarious little trailer to showcase the good time so check it out wow just Who's ready to get caught? Blah, blah, blah. I'm the actual devil, woobity boobity. Buckle up for 45 minutes of nothing, of nothing. Hatcher Movie Talks. Subscribe or you'll probably die or something. Have to say, I'm having a ton of fun with that movie review action. So I encourage you to help that channel grow. Go over and subscribe, watch some videos, and ultimately, have a good time. Now, on to the bad times, because man, do I have a whole page crammed with information that we need to go over. There are so many points that I was literally concerned I wouldn't actually be able to cover everything in one video, but we're gonna do our best to keep it concise and let you know everything you need to. So, let's start out with one of the most crazy announcements that fundamentally alters the nature of Magic the Gathering, and that is the Universe Beyond scenario. We have obviously been gaslit and tricked where Wizards of the Coast told us, check it out, Universe is Beyond is just this sweet little extra bonus thing that we're doing, and it's not meant to replace our in-world sets, anything of that nature. It's just meant purely as some fun extra stuff for people to enjoy. But the wolf pulled off its sheep's clothing and said, gotcha, punks, guess what? We're actually making all Universe Beyond stuff standard legal. People expressed a bunch of concerns in the past saying, man, I don't want the awesome Dungeons and Dragons, Swords and Sorcery style flavor of Magic the Gathering to be diluted down into just random, hey, I'm gonna have SpongeBob punch Iron Man in the face. Well, guess what? That's the world we're living in now. We're, first of all, they did actually announce a SpongeBob secret layer. If you haven't heard about that already, that's coming. What lives at the bottom of the sea? My hopes for MTG. Let me tell you that right now. So you, you have a scenario where they were like, you don't have to worry about that happening, right? That's off to the side. You can ignore it. In fact, just like 10 days ago, Rosewater posted on his blog talk saying, you don't have to worry about Universe Beyond stuff. It doesn't have to take away from Magic the Gathering. It's just an additional thing. Because if you didn't know this, the way that Rosewater operates is, right up until the moment that Wizards of the Coast makes a public announcement, he pretends like this stuff isn't happening and he doesn't know about it. It's like if he said, we have no plans to kick you in the shin talking about him and his buddy Greg. And Greg's totally over there priming up his leg, getting ready to kick you in the shin. But until Greg kicks you in the shin, Rosewater will tell you, no, nah, we ain't shin kickers, but they absolutely intend to bust yo shin, right? So that's, that's the world we're living in now. Universes Beyond is officially going to be standard legal for every 
set, okay? So they're just gonna be shoved into standard. They can be used in every format, which means there's nowhere you can go that will not be riddled with universe beyond stuff. And understand with the power creep level that Magic the Gathering is currently going with, there is zero chance that these cards won't be ultra relevant. You think Wizards of the Coast isn't going to be making cards that they want people to use? Also on top of that, remember, they're not really play testing anything anymore. So it's super easy for some goof bag weird no card from a set to be like oops this thing's ultra broken and everybody's using it tee -hee, buy all the sets and there you go you're gonna have this all shoved into standard which is one million percent immersion breaking magic the gathering's identity is going away remember how i said a moment ago that rosewater's like well you know this universe beyond stuff doesn't have to take away from the in-world magic we're not losing anything except Except when you look at the lineup for 2025, guess what? We were supposed to be getting Lorwyn in 2025. Nope, Lorwyn's been shoved to 2026. I wonder what's replacing it. Oh yeah, a to be announced Universes Beyond product. So we're literally going to be getting six releases all going into standard, 50% of which are Universe Beyond sets, okay? So we've got basically Final Fantasy, Spider-Man, and another Universe Beyond set coming this year. And then we have Aether Drift, Tarkir Dragonstorm, and Edge of Eternities. But the crazy part is, even the in-world magic sets aren't really magic as we know it, where it's based around traditional high fantasy, swords and magic and everything like that. No, no, no. The first set that we're getting in 2025 is called Aether Drift, after Tokyo Drift. It is a race car set where they have reskinned individuals as, check it out, I look like I come from that movie Greased Lightning. There's <laughs> just the, the insanity of it. They've got Chandra, for the first time ever, actually wearing her goggles, doing an Akira slide on a motorcycle. Like, this is not Magic the Gathering. Car games on motorcycles is not Magic the Gathering, right? Drag, uh, Tarkir Dragonstorm, that is the only set we're going to get the whole year that is going to feel like actual Magic the Gathering. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if it had Universe Beyond tie-ins, right? So then later on in the year, we're getting Edge of Eternities, which is an outer space set. Cards in space, which is, again, not Magic the Gathering, that is not. I'm riding a dragon with a sword, casting lightning bolts down from on high. It's like, prepare the photon torpedoes. We will blow their planet away. And it's like, uh, but Magic, Magic the Gathering? Like, this is just more of what we've gotten in 2024, where they've thrown aside the whole pretense of it even being magic and have gone, check it out, Thunder Junction, and pew, 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 cowboy set. Check it out, Dustmourne, horror, but not the kind of horror you're used to set in an actual magical world like Innistrad. It's just horror where, oh, we got Ghostbuster gear and Windbreakers and Converse shoes. So they're trying to pretend to us we're still gonna have like real, like actual deep magic worlds when there's zero chance of that. When they talked about the new foundation set that's coming up, which funnily enough, made me think, yo, Standard is about to improve. Standard's about to get better. They're paying more attention to Standard, which is I, which is what I wanted to see. But then they went, we're paying so much attention to Standard, we're putting universes beyond in it. And I'm like, no, not like this, never like this. So you, you have this insane scenario where I genuinely had some hope going, okay, they're gonna put this stuff into Standard, they're gonna beef Standard up, Foundations will be the ramp on, and it's even traditional style magic. But when they presented Foundations, they literally have in the clip a magic IP set. Think about that for a second. They literally have to tell people it's a magic IP set because going forwards, magic is going to be more and more universes beyond. Don't believe for a second that they don't plan to ramp up the universes beyond. They literally pushed back Lorwyn, an in-world set, for another universe beyond set that we don't even know is coming. Like, well, we know it's coming, but we don't know what's coming. We don't even know what the set is, but we know that's what we're losing Lorwyn for. And then on top of that, Lorwyn is going to be taking the spot that Strixhaven was supposed to have the year after. So no Lorwyn in 2025, and it bumps Strixhaven in 2026. So ultimately, what's going to happen is we're going to get more and more Universe Beyond sets to the point where we'll be lucky to get one actual in-world set 
a year. That's the genuine reality that we are facing. Wizards of the Coast has decided that Universe Beyond is what they can maybe rely on for money because ultimately their own world building is failing. Markov Manor was a disaster. It literally damaged relations with game stores and distributors. Thunder Junction was barely any better and they had to admit the failure of the Aftermath style sets and shove the big score into it, right? Then you have the fact that also with Duskmorn, it is not doing banger numbers. Bloombro was the one successful actual in-world magic release of the year if you don't count things like Modern Horizons 3, which was absolutely a success, right? But talking, that doesn't have any world building. That is literally just random cards all jammed together. So in terms of building their own unique worlds, out of four attempts to actually have in Magic Worlds, only one of them has actually succeeded. Two have failed, and Duskmorn is right in the middle where you can't really call it a full-on success and you can't really call it a full-on failure. So the lessons that are going to be taken from this by obviously higher-ups at Wizards are, well, our worlds aren't pulling in the money. We have to go harder and harder into universes beyond. And people are being gaslit by Rosewater on this where they're going, I don't like that 50% of the sets, we're getting three universe beyond sets right now coming up in the next year. And Rosewater's response was, that's just the current cadence. And people took that to mean, oh, at least some of them, oh, that's relieving. I'm glad that's just the current cadence. That's crazy to me. It's like if I said I was going to smack you in the mouth every five minutes and you're like, oh man, I don't want to be smacked in the mouth every five minutes. That sucks. And it's like, don't worry. That's just the current speed I'm smacking you in the mouth. That doesn't mean I'm planning on decreasing. That could mean I'm going to start to do it every minute. Whap, whap, whap. And so it's just this insane setup where it's very, very obvious that they intend to make everything universe beyond. There's no question about it. Think about this. They came out today, just today, and said, we actually designed the Final Fantasy set, the Spider-Man set, fully knowing they would be standard legal. So we were being lied to for the last year, year and a half, because that's how long it takes for them to actually design sets out, right? We were lied to for the last year, year and a half saying, you don't have to worry. This isn't gonna be part of your main magic thing. You'll get to play with your cool swords and sorcery stuff, and we have plenty of in-world sets. But now, oh, lo and behold, Universe Beyond is 50% and muscling actual worlds like Lorwyn out. And honestly, I don't have high hopes for Tarkir's Dragonstorm. When we back, went back to Kamigawa, they reskinned it essentially as Cyberpunk 2077. Wizards of the Coast has been trying to basically make every set into something connected to a proper, like a popular property. If you take a good look at the recent Lost Caverns of Ixalan set, you can see all the Minecraft cards that were shoved in there because they were trying to do a Minecraft crossover. That fell apart, and at the last second, they quickly cobbled together a Jurassic Park crossover instead. The world for Lost Caverns of Ixalan was actually supposed to be a brand new world, but once they had to change the dinosaur theme, they're like, okay, what we're actually going to do now is stick, even though Ixalan didn't have a center before, we're just going to say it does and shove it in there because Ixalan has dinosaurs. So all the choices that are being made for their actual magic IP sets are purely based around how do we connect these to exterior properties. So it's 50-50 for 2025. 2026 will probably be four universe beyond six in world and then we'll go five and one and then it'll get to the point where foundations the set that's legal for five years that'll be the only magic ip that we actually get and magic's going to warp so much that it's going to seem weird to new players when they come in and it's like so what is this foundation stuff like what it, what property is it tied to and i'm like no this is actually in world like this is magic the gathering's own property with its own unique creations and they'll be like what couldn't they get a crossover for this or well, this is weird that's the craziest part if you give it a few years people who are new to the game because magic players only stick around for a year and a half two years according to wizard's own research so they'll literally come into the game and be like they'll think that regular magic sets are the weird thing because magic will have diluted its identity to the point where the caught even the name will feel confusing to people they'll be like why is it called magic the gathering and we might reach the point where they basically start stop going instead of saying magic all the time when they're talking about the game like magic in italics when they're talking about their own game you will see them go mtg and then after a certain amount of time 
They might change what the M stands for. It might become multiversal, the gathering. They might fully rebrand the game because it doesn't feel like Magic the Gathering anymore. When you have Spider-Man and Final Fantasy, does that sound like Magic the Gathering or does that sound like Mashup the Gathering, right? So we literally may get to the point where they ought just say, okay, we, we're gonna change, we're gonna change the name. This is this is causing all of this is causing multiple people to just bounce. They're not happy about universes beyond going into standard. They're not happy about 50% being universes beyond the signals that were basically going to be continuing down this road even harder. And when you look at like side little parts of Magic the Gathering, like MTG Finance, for example, there's all these rumblings of people going, Okay, so I am selling off the mo like most of my collection because the way Wizards of the Coast is doing things, they're going to gut this game and there's going to be no long-term value in any cards anywhere. Wizards had courted the investor concept quite a bit over the years, doing a lot of things to try and cater to them. And it's reached the point where people who are only interested in magic trying to extract money out of it, or I mean, they're still somewhat interested in playing. I'm painting with a broad brush here. Finance falls into multiple categories, but there are a bunch of people who are just like, yo, I am, I'm done. I'm done having like an actual full on magic collection. Wizards of the Coast is gutting this game and it's ultimately going to collapse under its own weight. This is a very diminishing return style scenario. How many different IPs can Wizards of the Coast actually tap into and reasonably sell them to their customer base before they've done all the big interesting IPs and then it becomes smaller and weirder IPs that nobody has any interest in and Wizards sales keep going down and ultimately after X number of years of doing this, it's not like you can just turn around and go, we're high fantasy swords and sorcery again and everyone will come running back. All of the people that they have alienated will never return. So this is definitely a dead end road that they are barreling down, insisting this is the way of the future. And they're just going to constantly point to the market data and go, oh, this says the universe beyond is the way to go because our internal sets aren't doing well. But that's because their actual internal sets are poorly designed, quickly like just crapped out and you end up with this scenario. It's, it's absolutely wild. The amount of people who have just left comments on my videos and stuff going, yo, I'm unsubbing from every Magic channel. I'm just done with Magic the Gathering. They, they're literally destroying the game that I love. I've never seen anything like it. Finance bros going, uh, 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 uh. Like hardcore people. People who have been subscribed to my channel six, seven years are saying, yo, I'm done. I can't take anymore. And I get it. When I see it, I go, bro, this makes perfect sense to me. Magic the Gathering is genuinely falling apart. And they've been tricking us, right? They've literally been tricking us. There's a bunch of people over on Magic Arena who are in for a rude awakening. And some of them have already realized what's going to happen and are really upset. They're like, bro, I, I just got into this game and I love the flavor of all the different like high fantasy stuff. I absolutely don't want this universe beyond stuff, but it's going to be everywhere. You have no choice but to engage with the universe beyond going forwards. And it was always presented to us as if it wasn't this creeping plague that was going to take over everything. It was just a fun way for people to have some fun with some different stuff. But that's not the reality. That's not what we ended up with, right? So you have all of this coming together. And then you have the fact that they're cranking magic prices as well. They have brought back MSRP, which is the manufactured suggested retail price. Wizards of the Coast got rid of this years ago and basically hosed LGSs by doing it. When they got rid of the suggested retail price, that meant that consumers had nowhere to look and go, oh, this is what the price is supposed to be. Am I being overcharged? So they would go into a game store and see something, for example, Bloomboro versus Modern Horizons 3. Modern Horizons 3 packs cost two or three times the cost of a booster pack. But to anybody from the outside, they would just come in and be like, well, wait, hold on. These two sets, they got to cost the same to produce. So why is this being charged three times as much? It must be the greedy game store owners. So the MSRP coming back actually helps game store owners. I'm happy to see that. But unfortunately, everything else Wizards has been doing is completely hosing game store owners. Like the sets that they've been pushing out, the, the fact that Markov Manor brutalized stores profitability, a ton, a ton of stores and distributors 
took a bath on that set, lost a bunch of money. Thunder Junction, Wizards of the Coast use manipulative tactics to try and boost sales with that. They've got the secret layers where they're extracting all the money from the secondary market so that the LGSs don't have the ability to sell singles the same way. So while this is a nice little thing for LGSs, the relationship with Wizards has already been super soured to the point where lots of LGSs are leading heavy into other games. Lorcana, One Piece, new random games coming out of nowhere like Altered. In fact, I'm going to be doing a case study sometime soon where I use a particular card game that most of you haven't heard of to illustrate why Magic players are abandoning this game and leaving not just to the bigger games, but to other TCGs too. Tons of people are taking bites out of Magic's business because Wizards of the Coast is, is basically a bloated monstrosity at this point that's all about extracting as much money from us while providing as little value as possible. So, the return of MSRP literally shows that from Foundations, moving on to the next set, Aether Drift, vroom vroom, beep beep, that set is going to have another price increase. And I wouldn't be surprised to see multiple more price increases throughout the year because remember, we just looked at their financials recently. I think it was two videos ago. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And Magic the Gathering is already topping out at the money they can make. They can no longer crank insane money for Hasbro. And so they have to keep going at the speed they're going or increase the speed. Remember, I predicted this. I told you guys that Universe Beyond's basic presence would increase and I told you that Wizards of the Coast would crank out sets even faster and faster. If you felt a lot of whiplash from Bloomborough to Duskmorn to Foundations because the Foundations pre-release is one week for now friends. So if you felt whiplash from that guess what that's the new pace that Magic the Gathering is going at full on. So every two months bam new set bam new set bam new set it's probably going to reach the point where Magic the Gathering will be a new Universe Beyond product every month. And those sets will be put together by outside contractors that don't care about Magic the Gathering very much and are just doing a job and they won't be tested properly and the cards will just... And also, I very much believe that once Wizards of the Coast makes this fundamental shift over into not really being what it was that they will also loosen their stance on ai art and see if they can slide ai art by people because if they can get ai art going and they can get ai card design going then they can churn sets out as fast as they could be printed we could theoretically although i doubt we'll get there we could theoretically get to the point where there's a new magic set like every two weeks like a full onset being dumped on arena being dumped in paper but it really does beg the question where is the threshold where it all falls apart and they just can't make any money because it's oversaturated and they've completely sacrificed their ip like magic the gathering is an incredible concept from the very beginning it pulled me in with its flavor its lore it was deep it was rich and now it's it's the shallowest it could possibly be like if you need a drink of water you have to get your lips all the way down to the ground and get a little sip and that's all that's there this does not quench the thirst of people who genuinely like swords and sorcery style stuff anymore and honestly this universe beyond stuff people will get in for an ip that they really like yo i really love spongebob oh now it's the power rangers i don't care about the power rangers Oh, but don't worry, the next set is based on some other goofy property you don't care about. You want G.I. Joe? No, I don't. I guess I'm done. I'm not going to buy any more of this. There's no continuing investment, and they're not looking to have people invested anymore. It's all about short-term cash grabs as much as possible, because Hasbro as a business is absolutely failing. So, they don't care if Magic the Gathering gets milked dry and destroyed, all they care about is meeting quarterly targets so their shareholders don't fire the people who are up in charge of Hasbro so they can keep their jobs. And by the time magic is completely destroyed, those people up at the top of Hasbro will have basically sold out all their shares and moved on. The people who are in charge of making the decisions for the game don't care about the game. They only care about the actual money that they can make off of it, which is obviously a dismal situation to find ourselves in. So going forwards, things are just going to get lazier 
crappier and more disjointed. I genuinely wish that I had more positive things to say about Magic the Gathering, but I really am thinking about, I have a channel called Fantasy Geographic where I talk about Magic the Gathering lore. And I was stunned when it, when it dawned on me. I'm like, wait a minute, is there gonna be any more magic lore? Like, are we gonna get one, maybe two sets a year with five paragraphs of story where they don't worry about any of it making sense? Because who cares about lore? We're focusing way more time on making sure our universe beyond projects feel proper, putting way more effort into that. And it might just get to the point where they absolutely abandon magic lore. You might not realize this, but once upon a time, Standard was made of three sets all on the same world each year. So we're going to Mirrodin and we're gonna release three full length novels to tell you the entire story of it, which was epic compared to what we have now. I'm not gonna pretend like magic lore is something on the lines of like Wheel of Time or the Malazan books or whatever. It's not like they are the pinnacle of fantasy reading, but when you genuinely are into a game like magic, those books are amazing. They add so much so much to the game, right? And so all of these things are falling away. We're losing all of it as Magic the Gathering becomes Spider-Man just flip-flopping around. Check it out, I'm Spider-Man and I'm gonna go fight the God of the War on the back of a Shadow of Colossus. But hold on, I'm driving a monster truck while drinking a monster drink and it's just like, it's it's insane. It's It's just, it's beyond anything I could have expected. Now, let's talk about the rules change that is making people unhappy that somewhat goes back to how the rules used to work, but in another way, isn't how the rules used to work. Once upon a time, Magic actually used something called damage on the stack, which was mechanically interesting, but ultimately didn't make sense from a flavor perspective, where you'd assign all your attackers and blockers, and then they would do damage to each other, but that damage wouldn't resolve. The damage would basically go on the stack waiting to resolve, and then you could play instants and stuff in response to boost up your creatures. So Wizards of the Coast did away with that concept because ultimately, it wasn't that beginner friendly. It was a very much a got you moment for the people who like are very entrenched in the game and know the ins and out of the rules. So they changed the system so that if I'm attacking you with a creature and you block with two creatures, you get to choose the order that those creatures are dealt damage. So you can basically go, I'm gonna choose which one of my creatures. If you put two three threes in front of a five five, then the first three three you've chosen will take three damage and the second three three will take two damage. So essentially you will get to choose to save the second three three. Well now Wizards of the Coast is changing it so that after blockers are declared and after everything is played, so any kind of boost spells you have to give a creature bigger power toughness, all of that stuff resolves. And then after it's resolved, that's when the attacking player gets to decide how their damage is dealt across the different creatures. So this is a fundamental shift from what people are accustomed to and it does ultimately change how you're going to play your cards you're not going to be able to get as much mileage out of defensive tricks and this is also in a way a dumbing down of the combat rules so that new people who are being onboarded obviously all these new johnny come latelys from universe beyond and stuff will be able to more easily grasp the rules of magic the gathering so i mean I understand why people are unhappy about it because it is negative in some ways, there is some loss, but there's also some gain, some frustrations that will be alleviated because of it. One of the things I hated on Arena is sitting there waiting while my opponents decided how they wanted to order their blockers and things like that. Because sometimes you're playing at somebody who's really slow or they just shut down the game and you're sitting there. So that's one less phase on Arena at least where you're gonna be forced to wait for your opponent. But ultimately, that's a very, very small silver lining. And I definitely understand people's anger over this shift. It is one of the smaller things on the anger list, but it's absolutely another reason that people are tweaking out, right? So that covers, let me just double check because I have a lot of notes here. Did I cover everything? I believe, I believe that I've covered everything about these changes. So that wraps up the overall news. Like I said, I've got a movie review channel. We're having a lot of fun with it. And guess what? I actually have two trailers, but I kept the second one for the end as another fun little treat to maybe pick up your spirits after going through all of that awfulness. So let's check it out.
absolutely won. Fantastic job. How do you enjoy garbage like that? Huh. It sucks so hard. What's next, Carly? The almost birthday what? boy. What? This is what you're afraid of? Phone ringing. There's a phone ringing and an old piano and nothing else. Here's a noose, buddy, if you want to get out of it. All right, my friends, like I said before, I am having so much fun with the Movie Review Channel. I encourage you to go over there, subscribe, help me grow it because I'm trying to get it into the YouTube Partner Program, which requires more subscribers and more watch time. I will be doing a live stream tonight. You are welcome to come by and talk about all these issues, share your thoughts or other things about Magic the Other, or just talk about your trick-or-treating experience because guess what? I'm going out tonight dressed up as a devil. We will be trick-or-treating for some good times. So thanks for coming by and hearing what I have to say. Big shout out to my patrons. You guys rule. Thank you for supporting my channel and I will see you all in the next video.